President Biden set to meet with Mexican President Orbador at the White House any minute now. Uh, Orbador is expected to push for the U.S. to accept up to 800,000 migrant workers per year. Uh, but consider this, folks, uh, with the weekly jobless claims topping well over 700,000 and almost 19 million people still getting unemployment uh, benefits, there's a lot of Americans out of work. Should we be focused on them? I want to bring in South Carolina Republican Congresswoman Nancy Mace. She thinks so. She's here to discuss. And by the way, we did reach out to DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas on this. Uh, he was not able to join the show today. Congresswoman Mace, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me this afternoon. So uh, I guess I guess the Mexican president's got to ask, but um, I mean, you know, how can how can how can we pass another stimulus bill, uh, adding this sort of layer of urgency and 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 and, and desperation, and still negotiate to allow more workers into this country at the same time? No, that's right. And this, and no one would be surprised, right, if the Biden administration pursued this because they're not putting hardworking Americans first. We have millions of Americans out of work. We have millions of kids who can't go to school. We have millions of people who are desperate to get a vaccination and just can't get it. And yet here we are, open borders but closed schools. It just goes to show that he's not putting the American people first. And like you said with the last uh, vote we did last week on the, on the stimulus round, $2 trillion that we do not have, they're talking about lifting people out of poverty and they're going to keep them in poverty. This is not promoting uh, economic prosperity prosperity for hardworking Americans right now. Uh, you know, one of the big things, that, big things that President Biden did campaign on was a reset in foreign policy. And, uh, uh, we were, you know, we're not sure exactly where that's going to take us, but it sounds like they would like to undo almost everything that President Trump achieved while he was in office. And it just, you know, I, I was talking to a big hedge fund manager that says, listen, I'm apolitical. There's no way I can believe that everything President Trump did was wrong. So, you know, we're going down this dangerous path of unwinding things simply for political purposes. Where should our, our, we be with respect to our neighbors, particularly Mexico and other, other countries south of the border? Well, you're exactly right. But the Biden administration is trying to literally undo everything good, especially that the Trump administration did. Under his administration, we had record unemployment, not only for women, but black and brown, African Americans, Hispanic Americans, hardworking Americans. And we want, everyone wants, I think, to have free trade with our neighbors. We want to support and be allies to our neighboring countries here and abroad. But we've got to take a, take a stand and work for the American people. That's why we're here today, for nobody else but us, and to pull us up uh, to get us through COVID-19 pandemic, to keep our doors open, to keep businesses open, to put kids in school. And we're failing right now. The big, big issue is $15 minimum wage. Obviously, it went through in the House version, won't be voted on in the Senate version. But it does get back to how we started this segment off. Uh, almost 20 million Americans still receiving some form of unemployment uh, and benefits. What do we do for this portion of the society that's still lagging behind? Because the rest of the country has, has, take, has taken off. I mean, we've seen this late last year, and the momentum is certainly there. But there's a large portion that's missing out. How do we help them? Right. Well, I think most businesses know that over time, the minimum wage does need to increase over time. But we're seeing it when there is a healthy economy, when there is a free market, when supply and demand, when those are things are factored in, when unemployment is low, wages go up. And we need to make sure that we have the freest economy, freest market in the world to continue to prosper. Um, one of the things that President Trump did when he was um, president was he did the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. That lifted millions of Americans out of poverty. Wages were very high and unemployment was very low. We can't incentivize unemployment, adding additional monies to the federal unemployment going from 300 to 400. There are loopholes where people who work part time can get full unemployment benefits. These things hurt small businesses and we need to keep our, our states open. We don't need to reward blue state bad actors that shut everything down. Florida, South Carolina and other states have proven that you can put safety precautions, health precautions in place and have a fairly low unemployment. Right. South Carolina as a whole, we're just over right. 4 percent right now and we are in a much safer place and people are back to work for the most part. Uh, and to your point, uh, as soon as that uh, bill went through, a year over year wages for blue collar workers were at the best in over a decade. I want to uh, follow up on former President Trump uh, ripping uh, Republicans who voted to convict him on Sunday during a CPAC speech. Let's take a listen. 
Top establishment Republicans in Washington should be spending their energy in opposing Biden, Pelosi, Schumer, and the Democrats. The Democrats don't have grandstanders like Mitt Romney, little Ben Sass, Richard Burr, Bill Cassidy, Susan Collins, Lisa Murkowski, Pat Toomey. Congresswoman, is there a civil war within the grand old party? I don't feel like there's a civil war today. I know that we had some some difficult challenges at the beginning of the year to say but to say that would be an understatement. Um, I came in in a record year. This is the first day of women's history, March 1st. I'm the first Republican woman elected to the state of South Carolina to Congress. We've seen so much diversity, not only in the faces of this freshman class, but a diversity of ideology. And that, in order for the Republican Party to be a big tent party, we need to welcome as many diverse faces and diverse ideologies as well into that tent. And I had a lot of support from now my colleagues all across the country. I'm in a swing district, and there are many Republicans who are in swing districts. We won in large part because of the strong showing of former President Trump. But two, we've got to look forward to two years and four years from now and ensuring that we do everything we can, both as candidates and as a party, to not only retain the seats that we won in swing districts, but go out and get a few extra so we can have a majority in the House in two years. And I want to be a part of that plan. Congresswoman, I know you do. Uh, you, you've <laughs> hit the ground running, so congratulations. Thank, Thank you very you, much. Sir. We appreciate your time. Thank you well, so President much. Biden